relationship talk on the beautiful Espresso here on S3. Now, I know that a little earlier we had a discussion this related to sharing in a relationship, and now there are certain things that often are not shared. If you think about it, there are certain ways of coloring outside the lines or <laughs> online infidelity. This is a big thing in the, this day and age, you know. Um, it is massive. Uh, that's when you're in a committed relationship, but find yourself as Carl very aptly put it, yep. colouring a little outside the lines and looking for a connection online other than that with your partner. Well, our favourite clinical psychologist, Slindile Ambata, joins us to chew on this gristle. We love this because I think it affects a lot more people than we're aware of. Slee, hmm. are you nervous about chatting about this? Are you excited? Mm, I'm you very watched? interested <laughs> very to see what you think about this. Oh, well. really? Oh, really? I feel like that was just a quick... Yeah. Do you have any questions? A rope a dope. <laughs> a rope -a -dope. You just came back. Boom, boom. All right. Um, we love this topic because yeah. it does speak to the human condition right now. If you're in a relationship, chances are you've got one foot, one hand on your device in the social media space. Surely we can't all be fulfilled just by one person. Surely we need to have light and shade in our lives, or is this too much to expect? Hmm. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I mean, surely it's very interesting. I don't necessarily, I mean, I, I don't think that it would be reasonable to expect yeah. to be fulfilled by one person completely, you know. Um, I think even with our own family members, with our friends, there's different things that we can come to expect of them reasonably. Um, however, it doesn't mean that you should necessarily look for something else where. Yeah. You know, a partner can probably provide most for yeah. most of your needs, um, but maybe not all of them. And I don't know if it is also reasonable to expect that they're going to tick every single box. Okay. I know back in the day when we looked at our parents, it was like, you know, there's one man, one woman, you know, but now relationship dynamics have changed. Mm. I mean, there are modern relationships and traditional relationships. Mm. And I'd like to look into those for a second mm. because now that we do have an access point, uh, an escape, if you will, mm. for some, how do these traditional values clash with the modern values with regard to how we interact online versus how we interact as people? Mm. I know this is kind of a, a loaded and very vague question, but. <laughs> You know, I, I'm not trying to justify anybody's behavior, but we do exist in the online space more than ever mm. in our entire, you know, sort of history of humankind. So talk to me about how those modern tra relationships versus traditional relationships, how they clash and how it has come to be that some people have decided to use that little escape in their hands in order to find solace, peace, comfort, and maybe connection. Yeah, well, I think that, you know, traditional relationships are very different to modern relationships in terms of what the expectations might be. Yeah. You know, gender roles have changed quite significantly um, sure. over time. So what was normal 50 years ago might not be so normal today. I think also there's a lot more that is expected from people, you know, in terms of communication, uh -huh. um, provision, not just financially, but emotionally too. So nowadays, I think it's much more expected that you know each partner is going to show up much more fully in the relationship so not just physically in the home but that you're also you're present you're switched on um you know people i think we do expect people now to care so much more about what's going on with with us internally so there's a lot of like you know psychological yes talk and um i think there's just a much bigger expectation in general that people would be more interested in the different facets of what makes a person yeah yeah, so I think that sometimes maybe if people feel like they can't necessarily find everything in their relationship, they might go online and find that somebody else, you know, communicates a little better or understands them a little bit more. Or I'm going to put it down to something quite silly and just make this an ego-driven thing. You're wanting your partner of five years to keep stroking your ego. They're right. well beyond telling you how amazing you look. You go online you will get validation immediately Absolutely. from a stranger on yeah. tap. And I think there's something in that exchange. We can think about that for just a moment. We're going to continue our conversation around Slee. I'd like to ask you guys this question. When is too much? When does that online communication, that colouring outside the lines, become <laughs> infidelity? When is that cheating? And does that rest on your partner or you? We'll continue in just a moment. It's my feel-good show.
Welcome back to Feel Good Breakfast Show. This is Expresso and you're live on S3. Now, we had a quick conversation with Slee, our resident clinical psychologist regarding online infidelity and colouring outside the lines. And of course, I brought Ewan in over here because mm. uh, we, we need to really just unpack this concept of online infidelity, what it means and what are the implications thereof and all the nuances around it. But let's get straight back into it because there's a lot of questions here and a lot of people who would want to ask questions, but they're sitting and waiting for us to provide those. So let's yeah. go for it. We want to try and find that line. Yeah. You know, what is the line? Is there a line that you don't cross when it comes to, like you guys put it, colouring outside of the lines? I love that. Um, but I want to open with a statement um, or, 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 or kind of a couple of words because okay. we, 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 we think about this, we take it on board, but I mean, what, was, what would your opinion around it be? So that is being, uh, if you can't say it in front of your significant other, you probably shouldn't do it. Is that a fair test when it comes to chatting online? Absolutely, I think so. You know, I think that uh, sometimes we can really get distracted by the medium that we convey messages in. You know, so it might feel insignificant because, oh, it's from phone to phone, it's not words coming out of my mouth. But I mean, it's a conversation that you are having with, mm -hmm. you know, these these other people. And if you so wouldn't somebody say other than the person that you're romantically the person, involved in, exactly. And so, if you're sharing very intimate details or you're saying okay. things that are, you know, quite quite intimate, and you wouldn't necessarily say that in front of your partner or want them to know that that's what you are saying, I think you probably shouldn't be doing it. I can, I can start seeing that line. Y yes, <laughs> so, because the thing is that sure. the, the biggest justification would be I'm not touching somebody. You know, I'm not right. physic I'm not getting physical with anybody. Hmm. Uh, perhaps the content of the, the texts are of a nature that's adult hmm. and it's not you, but I'm not touching anybody, which would denote a traditional description of an affair. Sure. So that particular process, how people have defend themselves, especially with regard to online infidelity, hmm. how do you navigate that particular space? Especially when somebody is saying, hey, I'm exonerated from any sort of wrongdoing because it's just a text, you know? I'd still go into the same bed with you. Right. Well, I mean, I, I think that um, the, the question really is why are you doing it? You know, what, what is it that you are looking for? Yeah. Are so you even a if emotionally detached Right. So partner? even if it's not physical, mm. you know, it, it doesn't get physical. It doesn't necessarily have to. Sometimes it's emotional. And if you're seeking for, you know, uh, emotional maybe affection from somebody else, it might be a form of cheating. You know, if, if you are seeking um, even just somebody to say that you look quite attractive, you know, perhaps it actually is signaling that you need to reevaluate your relationship and probably communicate with your partner mm. instead of enjoying it from somewhere else. Yeah, I, I, just, I just feel like exactly. I mean, once you, once you step over that line where you are starting to chat to somebody other than your significant other. And I mean, relationships takes many, many forms, yep. you know, but I mean, in a traditional relationship, I mean, I always try to ask yourself the question, how would you feel if your partner goes about and start chatting with somebody else other than you uh, in a manner that is a little bit more emotional and, and, and deeper than they would chat to their partner or so. But it happens. It happens that trust is broken online. Um, it can be absolutely detrimental. And again, for a lot of people, there's different forms of infidelity and cheating and online, you know, being a space for one of them. Mm -hmm. How do you rebuild trust? Once something like that happens, when you have stepped over the line and your partner recognizes that as actual cheating? Mm. Yeah, I think it's very important to communicate um, with your partner about, you know, you, mi you might even need to understand where did it go wrong? So mm -hmm. where did this thing kind of start? Mm -hmm. Are my needs um, not being Are my needs not being met, you know, in, in the relationship? What are those needs? Are they reasonable needs to have, you know, from your, yeah. from your partner? Maybe it's actually needs that uh, um, we'd rather actually be having be fulfilled through our family members or friends, or then you actually expect your partner to be all things, you know, to you all the time. Um, but yeah, I think communication is key. Possibly going for counseling, you know, if, if uh, it might be better to have that conversation with a mediator present. And some people find it very, very difficult to say things to their partner, you know, because of fear that it's going to break down the relationship or that they won't be heard. So I think it's very important to sort of rebuild trust and also show show through your actions um, that you are willing to do what is needed to rebuild the relationship. So don't say, okay, great, I'm not gonna spend as much time online, but yeah. actually every time I walk in the room, 
you're on your phone, if, when we're supposed to be having quality time, you're still doing the same things as before. So let your actions actually match up with what it is it, that you're saying. It really saying. does come down to communication at the end of the day. That is it. Um, because if you really do care for each other in mm -hmm. that relationship, it doesn't matter how difficult it is, at the, at the end of the day, I mean, yeah. both parties need to be happy and fulfilled in that relationship. And it doesn't mean, you know, that there's particularly something wrong. Mm. It might just be a small little issue that needs to be addressed. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. And so when they say it's going down the DMs, what they mean is a direct message to your partner <laughs> <laughs> and saying, I'd like to chat to you directly yeah. and actually connect. And that's, communication is such a beautiful thing. We've been uh, chatting about this as a theme in the show. But Asli, thank you so much for, for tackling some of these very, yeah. very key things around online infidelity. And of course, if you are seeking guidance from a psychologist, that can really be valuable in navigating the impact of online infidelity on a relationship.